Hey, what's going on, everybody? Nick Sapinero here from the Divi Project for your September 6th Divi Crypto Podcast episode. So this is actually my first podcast episode, and I'm really excited because it's the podcast episode in which I get to announce something that I've been holding back for a couple months now, actually. And before I get too deep into exactly what it is, I kind of want to explain how we got here. So obviously the mission behind Divi has always been to create a vertically integrated, simplified digital finance ecosystem. And we started with a focus on user experience so that we knew that when it came time for mass adoption, when people started actually utilizing cryptocurrencies in the real world, um, we would be positioned to be quickly picked up by pretty much anyone. But we also realized early on that it was really important for us to create an ecosystem that not only supports cryptocurrency, but supports fiat currencies as well. And I know that's like a bad word (laughs) to a lot of the maximalists out there, but I think you'll understand why in a moment. First of all, I don't think we're that close to mass adoption as we see it today, you know, with debit cards, for example, or, or other digital or other finance applications. Um, I think we're probably five or 10 years away. And with some of the amazing developments that companies throughout the industry are making, I think we're well on our way and right on track. But I do believe that the sort of value chain is extremely fragmented. And one good example of this is actually Tesla. So the automotive industry is another one that's really fragmented as far as, well, from pretty much start to finish on the value chain. Most companies don't manufacture uh, their own parts necessarily. So you're hiring manufacturers, you're hiring designers, you're hiring uh, assembly lines, you know, and then you have to ship it worldwide or wherever your, your customers are. And then finally there's stores and, um, and then it finally gets to the customer. Right. And the customer actually feels all of that in that they have to then um, pay for all of those aspects of the value chain. But also then they have to go and fuel their car and and participate in that part of the economy. Tesla take took it all the way from the start. Right. So they actually design their own cars. They manufacture their own stuff, assemble them, and then they even provide the fuel. (laughs) Right. So they're actually providing pretty much every aspect of that value chain as the consumer needs. That initially is extremely capital intensive, right? It loses money actually initially, but as you start to see the adoption rate begins to pick up because it all starts to make sense. In fact, I read an article that said, um, basically owning a Tesla over like lifetime value is more economical than owning, owning a Toyota Corolla. So a Model 3 is more (laughs) economical than a Toyota Corolla because the resale value, because the ability to update the car uh, remotely and things like that. So Tesla built this vertically integrated ecosystem that is uh, allowing them to dominate, in some sense, the automotive industry. And that's what Divi is trying to do with cryptocurrency. But it's it's been difficult for any company to achieve that goal because you not only need all of the crypto financial services, which are extremely fragmented as well, but you also need all the fiat services, uh, which are in their own way fragmented. So if you take a, a new user of cryptocurrency, for example, and you start them from start to finish, and I've, I've given talks on this, the, the level of friction just to get your first altcoin or to make your first investment in cryptocurrency is pretty high. I and mean, you have to go on Coinbase or some other uh, fiat on ramp and then move that um, cryptocurrency that you purchase there to another wallet. So that's two places on the value chain that can be uh, consolidated. Then, you know, if you wanted to, if you made some money on it, uh, maybe you want to cash out. That's another point of friction. It's really hard to transition between fiat and crypto easily, especially with taxes. And then how do you report it? Right. You have to you have to consider all of these steps. What if you want to borrow against cryptocurrency? There are services that allow you to do that. But that's yet another point of friction and something else to learn. If you wanted to diversify or um, secure some of your investment, mitigate some risk by putting it in MakerDAO or or some other stable coin. Another point of friction, another le- layer, another trip down the rabbit hole just to do things that already exist in traditional finance. So in order to replace this legacy system, 
it can't just be about decentralization, which it is. It can't just be about, you know, taking on the banks, which it is. It has to be a full service uh, offering that not only is a great experience, but actually offers a better experience, a more vertically integrated, a less fragmented, a less friction heavy experience overall. So all that is to say that we've essentially solved this problem. With our investment in a remittances company in Costa Rica. What? What did he just say? <laughs> so let me backtrack a little bit. Um, as the bear market was sort of coming to a close, uh, we caught the attention of an investor who is extremely interested in exactly what we're doing, creating a vertically integrated ecosystem that allows you to quickly transition between fiat and cryptocurrencies, not just Divi, not just Bitcoin, but many cryptocurrencies and many fiat currencies. We then found an opportunity in Costa Rica with this remittances company who's really forward thinking and really crypto friendly. They're new guys on the block. They're trying to take on, you know, Western Union and Swifts of the world. And they were ecstatic when we came. Um, they do have a physical location in Costa Rica already, and they have a few ATMs and, and uh, terminals around Costa Rica in uh, various city centers. But they didn't know really like how to scale or like where they were going to go from where they were. They're already offering lower fees than Western Union. Once a customer's onboarded, you're actually able to uh, remit in, I think, like four or five minutes versus a couple days with Wells Far or sorry, with Western Union. And they're clearly trying to do things differently. So that was attractive to us. And so we raised $1.25 million and we put $750,000 of that into this investment, into this remittances company in order to expand it and scale it to the point where it can offer more financial services and help us build our vertically integrated ecosystem that will allow us to transition between crypto and fiat. They already have relationships with 200 countries in the world. So we're already going, as soon as, as, soon as we launch, we're already going to be able to transmit money in all, in all of those 200 countries, including the United States. In fact, the only countries that aren't on the list are ones that you probably wouldn't want to work with anyway. So we're not too worried about that. Um, it also allows us to expand their operations. So they're going to open five more offices. All of these offices are going to incentivize their users or their customers, I should say, to use Divi uh, instead of fiat for fees, for remittances fees and for other fees. Um, because we're investing so much money in, into their operation, they're actually able to go and integrate with the, uh, the central bank of Costa Rica. With that, they're able to issue IBANs, which are basically bank accounts. So we can actually bank underbanked and unbanked individuals as long as they have an ID and a phone number. That's all they need. And they can actually get an account and store money and transmit money to their family, friends, whoever. As well as purchase cryptocurrency on and off, fiat on-ramp, off-ramp, will be available at launch of the mobile wallet. Everywhere. Everywhere in the entire world, pretty much, including the United States, which is like one of the hardest money transmitter licenses to acquire. Um, and because we're actually partnered with a company that we are a stakeholder in, we don't run the risks that other cryptocurrencies who are trying to do this run into. You have, you know, other companies that have a, uh, a debit card, which we'll be able to offer. Um, you have other companies that are doing fiat on and off France, which we'll be able to offer. Um, but the problem is they're only partnered with those companies, right? They're only partnered with those banks and those financial services companies. So at any time, if regulations change or if they just get cold feet, those banks and those financial services companies can actually pull the rug, as we've seen with Coinbase just recently in the UK. And that's Coinbase. So again, because we're a stakeholder in this company and, are, and we're contractually obligated to one another, there's no chance of the rug being pulled out from under us, and we're actually able to guarantee that this financial services company extends long into the future. So as it pertains to Divi users, as I said, there are multiple use cases for Divi uh, within, this, within this opportunity, the fiat on and off ramp, uh, the, the, the crypto debit card, and the 
we're calling them one-click bank accounts, uh, but they're really just IBANs that the user can use to store and transmit fiats. And we pretty much have every fiat currency available. Uh, so it's not just USD, it's not just uh, you know Euro or, or pounds. It's everything in all of those countries where it really, really matters. So as you can probably surmise from what I've been saying, this is extremely beneficial to the Divi ecosystem as a whole. It really solves pretty much the most major issues that were blocking us from becoming a real finance app, a real competitor in the finance landscape. And it also provides the opportunity for people around the world in, uh, in underserved, unbanked, underbanked countries to um, get accounts that they can use and feel secure in using. We can also take a look at some of the opportunities that will come for the cryptocurrency ecosystem as a whole and other high risk industries as well. While we're at it, I mean, cannabis, gaming, of course, all the, all the cryptocurrencies will all have the opportunity to come to us with their finances and have a place, a safe haven where they can actually store their money, use their money, convert it to crypto, convert it to fiat, whatever they want to do, all within our ecosystem, completely eliminating the friction tax and essentially delivering on the vision that we had in the first place, which is to make cryptocurrency as easy as you, to use as possible. Now, I'm obviously extremely excited about this opportunity and it still feels a little bit surreal to me, but we're really excited to demo this at World CryptoCon in October. And if you're in Las Vegas at that time, it starts on the 28th of October and we'll be there till the 31st. If you can come, if you can make it to that conference, I'll be on stage actually showing off how this all works, how you can actually use cryptocurrency in the real world. And I'm really excited because we're already seeing adoption in, in Venezuela and, and Nigeria and places like that with even without the, the mobile wallet. Now with the mobile wallet, imagine the potential the the reach that we'll be able to extend to all over the world so we'll get more into you know the the opportunities presented by this uh new financial services company that we're building and how it pertains to the divi ecosystem and other podcasts but i i really just wanted to give you guys this quick update and explain a little bit of a cursory overview of, of how we got here why we're here and what we're doing and hopefully get everyone a little bit excited um, because it is exciting. I mean, this is a new paradigm for Divi, and it's really a massive step forward for Divi 2.0, which still no one is calling Divi 2.0, but that's okay. So I will leave you with that, and I will definitely see you on the next Divi Crypto podcast.